Now we come to the second part of the chapter on enhancing decision making, the part where we would be talking about business intelligence and business analytics. So these are actually two different terms. The first one, business intelligence, would be the infrastructure used for collecting, storing, analyzing data, and, uh, and these are the ways to store them. So basically, uh, business intelligence is for uh, gathering data and putting it uh, putting the data in a specific place in the databases, data warehouse, data marts, and then analyzing the data. That's the process of business intelligence. While business analytics is more specific, these have to do with the tools and techniques for analyzing the data. And we have been talking about OLAP, OLAP uh, online analytical processing, where you have the cube structure where you can slice and dice the different variables in the cube. You, have, you can use statistics, you can use data modeling and data mining. And then you have vendors. Uh, those are the uh, companies that help you create uh, those systems. Now there are six elements in business intelligence. We can look at it from uh, this slide, this diagram. So first, this is about the data from the business environment. So the data could come from different areas because this is about intelligence gathering. You would be trying to get as many data as possible from wherever the source might be, from call centers, because the call centers would have lots of information on what the customers are asking about or the experiences of the customers. The websites might have comments on them from mobile devices on how your products are being used, where are they being used and so on. Uh, maybe from blogs from the uh, consumers, from your suppliers from the stores that sell your products and even from uh, the government employees itself. Okay. And then uh, this data are stored in the business intelligence infrastructure in the databases, data warehouses, and data marts. And then uh, these databases, this storage of data, would be analyzed using business analytics tool sets. Uh, there might be four types of analytics that you could be doing. And then there are managerial users and methods uh, which could be used for the analysis. So you might be analyzing the data based on a specific strategy, specific business strategy that you have. You might be analyzing the data for the purpose of managing, monitoring the performance of the company, or maybe for the purpose of a balanced scorecard in which you would be uh, trying to find out about the four perspectives of uh, managing the company, or maybe for forecasting. And how do you do that? Uh, you use these types of platforms. So the business analytics tool set might be in the MIS, in the uh, management information system, the decision support system, or the executive information system. Now, uh, then you can see here the DSS, for instance. It houses the databases, it houses the data warehouse, and then you, it might be using OLAP, online analytical processing systems for analyzing the data. And then uh, these systems would have a user interface. On the computer screen, you can choose whether you want to just show the report in written form or show it in a dashboard in the form of graphics, for instance, like the ones, uh, like the dashboard that you have in a car. You can see the uh, remaining fuel. You can see the speed of uh, the car. You can see the RPM of the car in a, uh, in, in, in a certain uh, visual manner. Uh, you can do that also in 
the way you show it on the screen, which is called called the user interface. And then it might be done. And you might be using a scorecard, a scorecard uh, with several variables and several criteria to find out the performance of the company. Uh, you might be using it through different media, including desktop mobiles. You might be accessing through a website. Uh, you might be accessing through social media as well. Now here, uh, we have been talking a little about 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 this okay so uh what are the analytics capabilities so the main goal here is to get timely real time actually and accurate information to decision makers and real time data is not easy to get that's why you need uh, to constantly monitor the data from the business environment and it should be accurate if you remember about information quality it includes accuracy. And then the main functionalities of a business intelligence system to make, uh, the, these are examples, uh, reports on how production is going. If a, uh, if a customer has a certain order, you should be able to find out how much of that order, uh, the person orders 1000 shoes, for instance, and uh, with five types of shoes with uh, 10, shoe sizes and so on. So you should be able to monitor the production of that order or all, all the production in general from a certain factory. A parameterized reports would be reports in which uh, you have uh, variables to judge. So it, it might be, uh, the parameter might be in terms of uh, customers the age of the customers, the geographical area of the customers. It might be the gender, the lifestyle, the, uh, the work, the, the salary and so on of the customers. Those are the parameters that you might be using. You might show it, show it in a dashboard. It might be ad hoc, meaning uh, it might be something that's different from what you usually do, not something routine. So the dashboards would be routine data that you show. Ad hoc queries would be specific queries or questions that you put to the uh, information system. You might want to drill down, meaning you want to know more about a specific uh, data, drilling it down. Or you might be making models or scenarios or forecasting. Now, uh, it says that 80% are casual users, meaning users that uh, just use reports. They don't really drill down, they don't really use specific ad hoc questions, but they just uh, use the ready-made reports that are, are provided by the systems. Other, uh, the others might be senior executives which monitor functionalities, the middle managers having ad hoc uh, analysis and the operational employees, which uh, looks at pre-packaged reports. So these are reports that has been uh, ready-made and it's routinely used. Like uh, every time you want to know customer satisfaction, you want to know about the supply chain, uh, how much backlog or how much pending orders that you have on productivity and so on. Okay, so here are the 80% casual users. These usually just uh, use the information, uh, the analysis that has been provided by uh, the business intelligence. Uh, it could be in these five types of capabilities. And you can see here uh, on the left side, you have the power users. This is the remaining 20%. The power users would be the IT people that develop the business intelligence system. The super users, the admin of the system. It could be the business analyst that would be, for instance, trying to find out whether it's feasible to enter a new market or not. Or maybe uh, people that do analysis, uh, modeling. Modeling, for instance, uh, the most profitable route 
for an airline, for an airplane, or maybe for a ship transportation company, a shipping company. So which is the best route? Or let's say, which are the best uh, lines that is most profitable? Now here are uh, an example of production reports. Okay, production reports is most widely used and uh, usually it's prepackaged, meaning that you just press the button and then it'll come out in the, uh, in the form of, of forecasts of sales, customer satisfaction and so on. So uh, this has already been prepared in uh, the system. You might be doing predictive an analytics. So uh, this is more ad hoc. It depends on your uh, needs at that time. So you might be doing a statistical analysis for a certain behavior pattern of customers. So uh, let's say who, uh, what are the triggers of a customer buying something? So uh, first a customer would be doing this at that time, he would be uh, on a certain date, uh, people with a certain level of salary, people with a certain uh, culture or a certain behavior would be doing this, would be buying a certain product, for instance. And you could look at historical data, the data that, that you have previously and so on. Okay, and uh, there are also uh, applications that are ready-made, for instance, to detect fraud, for instance, or uh, to give uh, customers, uh, bank customers, a credit score, whether that person is uh, feasible to be given a credit or not. Now we come to the subject of big data. So what is big data? So uh, big data is not something that you would be seeing inside the company, but usually it becomes big because the number of data is so huge, so massive uh, that you couldn't be able to process it using a usual, a regular information system. The level of data would be, uh, let's say coming into the millions or even billions of data each day. Uh, it could be collected from social media, it could be collected from uh, the search that people do on online and, and so on. So each person would be clicking, its customer would be clicking uh, your e-commerce site uh, once every three seconds, trying to find a different items and so on. Each of those clicks would be recorded and then analyzed. Also, uh, it might be at the level of gathering data from different sensors, for instance, uh, and each sensor would be giving out uh, data, recording data every second or maybe less than a second. Okay. So uh, this is a specific form of analytics in which would be processing huge amounts of data. And then you have operational intelligence and analytics. Now, uh, as the name says, it's about operating your company, the operations of the company. It might be on the production, it might be on how your uh, company uh, interacts with customers and so on. And here you can see also again, the internet of things. So creating data that is inputted in uh, the system. So let's say you have uh, uh, 10 factories. Each factory has uh, another 10 production line. Each production line has five machines. Each of those machines has five processes. Each of those processes has a sensor in them, which tries to uh, figure out the condition of the machine. So the, the temperature of the machine, how quick the machine is working, uh, let's say the, uh, the, the the amount of water that is used to uh, in the operating of that machine and so on. And then uh, it's recorded every second, put it uh, into the system. So it could be also uh, using 
big data analytics. You might be using location analytics, uh, for instance, trying to find uh, information, insights on uh, the position of your uh, of, of your customers based on their mobile phone. So uh, if you use Google Maps, for instance, you can take a look at where you have been. Or Google can see which is the most popular uh, restaurant that people go to, which is the most popular route, uh, the popular road that people would be going through. So this is location analytics. Something quite close to that is geographic information systems. This is basically a database that's uh, geographical. So you can imagine the database would have information on where the data is uh, recorded, for instance. And uh, this could help governments calculate, for instance, uh, response time to disasters. So uh, if there's a tsunami, where will the tsunami hit? You can have a map on that. And where do people go for safety? Uh, of course, for businesses, you can, uh, for instance, decide on where you should put your stores or where you should put your factories based on several geographic information and the maps that relate to those. Now, the next thing we should know is about uh, the different management strategies to obtain BI and BA capabilities. You can use one-stop integrated solution, meaning that you, have, you find just one vendor for all your needs, including hardware, software, BI and BA, or you could uh, find different vendors for each capability. But then uh, comes the problem of uh, integration and dependence. One-stop integrated solution, of course, integration is already there, but you would be dependent on a certain vendor. If you, use, if you choose the best, uh, the best offering from different companies, then, and you use different companies for your purposes, then you might be having greater flexibility and you would be independent, but integration would be uh, a problem. Now, Okay, we'll move on on who would be making the decisions. It could be uh, the middle managers, it could be the business analyst, and then uh, the types of decisions might be uh, decisions for semi-structured decisions. Uh, the semi-structured decisions would be what if analysis, uh, sensitivity analysis, backward anal sensitivity analysis, and all that. So we'll take a look uh, swiftly at what uh, those uh, mean. Okay, so you have the sensitivity analysis. This is an example of uh, trying to find out how uh, changes in the uh, the uh, price, the selling price of the uh, product, and also the cost, the variable cost of the product would affect break-even point. You can see here, uh, break-even point is reached at uh, when you sell 1,357 ties. Okay, but then if you sell it, uh, and, and you sell it, let's say for $17. Okay, uh, now uh, the assumption here is you sell it for $17 and then the production variable cost would be $1,303 and the break-even point would be 1357. But then if you change the uh, cost, the variable cost per unit into four, then it would change into 1,462 units that you have to sell to reach break-even point. What if now you sell it for less, not $17, but $14? Uh, you can see that the break-even point would be increasing. You have to sell 1,727 uh, products. Okay, so this is a sensitivity analysis. Now, this is an example of OLAP, online analytical processing, in the simple form of a Python table in Excel. So you can drill down. Like uh, You can see here, this is the original uh, data, but now you want just to see 
about the region and the source. You take just region and the source and you get this. Uh, you get uh, this new table. Okay, you can see here in the East region, uh, in this training company, this is an online training company, the customers know about the trainings 24 in the East region through email and 77 through the web and total 101 and, and so on. You can change the uh, parameters here, uh, change into uh, not region and source, but region and product or, re or let's say payment and amount and so on. And then you would be getting a different perspective of the data. And now if you might remember ESS would be uh, the executive support system, the system designed for senior managers to make strategic decisions. So uh, if you have known about the balance scorecard, this is as an example, uh, the balance scorecard method uses four dimensions to measure the performance of a company, not just financial dimensions, but also the business process, how the procedures are done and implemented about the customers and about how the company learns new things and uh, the growth of the company. And each of these dimensions are given key performance indicators like this. This is the balance scorecard framework. So the company uh, would be uh, measuring the performance based on, of course, finance. And you have five items here in finance, but also in business processes, you have another five, uh, the number of activities, the accident ratio and so on. About customers, you have another five. This is example, it might be more or less than five. Okay, customers about delivery, about quality and so on. Even about how the empl uh, employees, your workers learn uh, and uh, learn from their mistakes as well about the illness rate of the employees, about turnover, how, how quickly do employees get fired or uh, go out of the company, for instance, and, and, and so on. So it becomes a more integrated and a more comprehensive view of the company. Another uh, perspective is on business performance management. So, so this is about using also key performance indicators to find out the performance of a company, not necessarily using the uh, balance scorecard, but using other variables. And then talking about the data for the active support system, it could come from internal data from inside the company. It might come from outside of the company, or you might be drilling down, uh, trying to find out more and more about a specific uh, variable that the company has. And then here, this is some new development. You have group decision support systems. So uh, it seems that the decisions that are being made it's more and more needed to be discussed with uh, several other people in the company. So that's why you have to interact with other people, uh, sometimes in groups. So you have several groups that interact within the group or between groups. And then you have a system to support the decisions made by uh, these groups. Uh, it might be in the terms of hardware, for instance, using projectors, using screens, uh, it might be in the form of software for making decisions together. So it's kind of like a company based Facebook, for instance. Uh, and then it promotes collaboration and it promotes uh, getting more ideas and evaluating uh, those ideas. Okay. So uh, there has been lots of topics that are covered in these two parts in decision making using information systems as well in our discussion on business intelligence and business analytics. Hopefully this would be useful for implementing in our businesses in the future. Thank you very much and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.